Hey guys, welcome back to another podcast. This is 5.3, part of the reactions chapter, and today we're going to be looking at aqueous reactions. Um, so what does aqueous mean? Well, aqueous is um, anytime we have a solute dissolved in water. Okay, and water is the solvent. So remember, the solute is the substance being dissolved, and the solvent would be what is doing the dissolving. So anytime we have water as a solvent, so anytime you put sugar into water or salt into water or something like that, uh, it is an aqueous solution. And when we dissolve a couple of things, we need to make sure we understand the difference between covalent compounds and ionic compounds. And a covalent compound is something like sugar. So we're going to use C6H12O6. So we have a bunch of non-metals bonded together, uh, and these stay molecular. Okay, so when they are dissolving, they don't fall apart. That the compound itself, I have all these little units of C6H12O6 um, staying within the water itself. Uh, it, it doesn't fall apart into its individual atoms, unlike the ionic compounds where these ionize into their separate parts. So when I take Sodium chloride, for example, this is an ionic compound. Uh, it's a metal, in case you've forgotten. So we have a metal, and we've added it with a non-metal, okay, making this ionic. And what happens is that this ionizes into its two parts. The sodium comes off as a sodium ion, and the chlorine comes apart as a chloride ion. And so now we've got this mixture of ions floating around in solution. And when we only have one thing, uh, one compound dissolved in a solvent at a time, then there's no problem. You know, we can have sodium and chlorine there, and they, if we dried it up, it would be sodium chloride. But when you get a mixture of uh, ions, like you're going to see in this, this particular podcast, that's when we get to have chemical reactions take place. Uh, one more vocab piece we need to look at, we, when we have electrolytes versus non-electrolytes. An electrolyte is a solution that transmits electricity. Okay, so a solution that transmits electricity. So when you see Gatorade commercials and they talk about electrolytes, um, these are chemicals or, or dissolved substances in solution that will that will transmit electricity if we need to, and these are ionic solutions. Okay, because we have free ions floating around, they can take extra electrons and pass them to something else. Uh, so a positive, um, elect or positive ion will pick up extra electrons and then pass those extras along to a negative, return to something else negative. Um, a non-electrolyte then is just the opposite. So this is a solution that will not okay, transmit electricity. And if electrolytes are the ionic solutions and the non-electrolytes are the molecular or the covalent. Okay. So a sugar solution will not transmit electricity. Um, a salt solution will transmit electricity. Uh, so we've got an electrolyte versus a non-electrolyte. And finally, solubility. This is just a descriptive term um, that describes the ability to dissolve. Okay, it's a physical property, and so when we're talking about chemical A versus chemical B, they might have different solubilities. They might have different um, uh, extents to dissolve. And because of solubility, we can predict the products of chemical reactions. So if you haven't noticed yet, I need you to flip to the last page in the packet. I'm going to show you a picture. And I've got a copy here. Mine looks a little bit different than yours. Same information, but mine's inverted colors for whatever reason. But when we look at this, we have soluble ionic compounds at the top. And we're only going to be talking about ionic. And we have insoluble ionic compounds. You do not need to have this memorized this year, but you do need to have it for reference. Um, so we're going to be using this. So have this available to you. I'll throw it off to the side and so I can get back to it quickly. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we describe these in a three-step process. And we're looking at a reaction between sodium carbonate and lead to nitrate. Uh, so we need to write our chemicals in a complete molecular equation. So this is just a general reaction. This is what you've seen before. So sodium carbonate, sodium is Na, carbonate is CO3, and carbonate is a two negative, so I need two sodiums, 
and we're adding that to lead to nitrate. So PB, lead is a plus two because of this. So then a nitrate being a negative one, we need two of them. So these are the reactants. So we're gonna be writing an, an equation for this. So the first thing, we start with the reaction. So we have sodium carbonate, and I hope you can see now where, where the naming came in, why the naming is so important to be able to do, and then lead to nitrate. And I need a two here. And we're getting into the portion where we're going to be describing reactions. But if you look, we have two ionic compounds. Okay, we have a metal and a non-metal here, and a metal and a non-metal here. So they're both ionic. And when they dissolve, they, they, they fall apart. So I'm going to skip down to the solubility portion of it, and then we're going to come back to number one. So bear with me for a minute. Looking at the complete ionic equation. So this is where we write the ions. Right, all present ions. So sodium carbonate, when this dissolves, I end up with sodium ions and we have carbonate ions. Now notice when you're writing this, how many sodiums do you have up here? Well, looking at the subscript, okay, that means I have two. That two swings out to tell me that I get two sodium ions for every sodium carbonate that dissolves, okay? And remember, carbonate is a polyatomic ion. So that's the sodium carbonate right here, this whole thing. And then we look over to the lead two nitrate. So now I've, I've got a lead ion. Remember, the lead is a two positive. And then we get two nitrates. So two NO3 negative. So I've taken all of my ions now. My compounds have dissolved. They've ionized into their separate parts. And what we do is we pair up positives and negatives, okay? Just like magnets, two positives cannot pair up with one another. So the sodium is going to pair up, find a new partner, and the nitrate. Okay, so this is going to be one new compound. And then the next one, the lead, is going to pair up with the carbonate. So we've switched partners, okay? My cation has switched with the opposite anion. And same, vice versa over here. My cation has paired up with the opposite anion. So we can write our new compounds up here in the complete molecular equation. We have sodium pairing up with nitrate. Now remember, nitrate is a negative one, sodium is a plus one, so I only need to have a one to one ratio. I don't need extras. When you're writing these, make sure your charges are balanced. So there's one compound, and then the lead is a plus two, pairs up with the carbonate, which is minus two, and so that stays as PbCO3. So that's how we can predict the products of these reactions. And this is where the solubility rules come in. So we're gonna jump deck back down here. So we know our two compounds, and we need to um, check against our list. So looking at sodium nitrate, I need to look at my soluble compounds. And if you notice right here, okay, nitrate comes under a soluble compound. So this is going to stay aqueous. It's going to stay dissolved. The lead carbonate then, if I look for carbonate, the carbonate is down here in the bottom half. And this is insoluble. That means that this becomes a solid. And we use a phase label to show that. So let me get this out of the way. We'll go back up here. To show that this becomes a solid, we put a little s right there next to it. Everything else is already dissolved, so this is aq. This is aq to show aqueous, and this is aq. So these phase labels tell me if they're ionic or if, if they're ions or if it's um, as a solid compound. So down here now, under the complete ionic equation, sodium nitrate stays aqueous, so I still have sodium ions, and nitrate ions. But now here's the difference. This lead carbonate, okay, this lead two carbonate is a solid. It does not ionize. So this stays as a compound. We have PbCO3. And this is a solid. It's a unit. It's a whole. It's a compound staying together. It will not dissolve. And we're going to look at a lab that shows this. So uh, from here, now what we can look at is, all right, is my equation balanced? Now, as written, I have two sodium on the left and only one on the right. To balance that real quick, we take a two, and then we've got two nitrates, 
two nitrates again, and everything is balanced now. If this carries down, I get two sodium here and two nitrates to keep everything else in check. Now the net ionic equation, this shows me what's really happening in the reaction. Just like in math, if you have an x um, going into an equation and an x coming out of an equation, they cancel each other out. The same thing happens here. Okay, Looking at this reaction, if I have two sodium going in and two sodium coming out, nothing has really changed. So we take this and we ignore it. So let me rewrite this so I can so we can see this a little bit easier. So we have two sodiums plus a carbonate plus a lead and two nitrate. And that all reacts to give two sodiums, two nitrate, and a lead two carbonate compound. So I'm gonna do this in red now. So sodium goes in right here, and sodium goes out. It is exactly the same as it was when it went in. So this cancels itself out, okay? Um, looking along, carbonate has changed. Now, carbonate ion to carbonate in a compound is different. Lead ion, lead in a compound is different. And then the nitrate, lead go, or nitrate goes in here, nitrate comes out here, it's exactly the same, so it cancels. So our net ionic equation then comes to lead, and we typically show the cation first. Okay, lead 2 plus a carbonate will give us lead 2 carbonate solid. This is a net ionic equation, and it's showing the, the reaction that we can see, we can physically see. Um, and then the last thing we need to say is that identical species and reactants and products, so the sodium here and the sodium here and the reactant and the product, these are called spectator ions. Okay, we're acknowledging that they're present. They are there, they're in the solution, they can mix with each other, but they aren't really part of the overall re equation or the reaction that we're seeing. I see the lead carbonate solidify, it comes out as a precipitate. Um, the rest are just spectators, they're there, they're present, they could get in, but for the most part they're going to stay out of the way. So I know that was a lot to throw at you. Check your homework page, um, look at these equations. So we're going to start with a complete molecular, and for this particular one, all we did is we swapped. Um, and for most of what you're going to see, they're going to be single and double displacement. And we're going to talk about those in the next podcast. But um, swap your ion pairs, balance the equation, and then look at the net ionic equation.